In this video, I'm going to share with you five actionable tips to get an internship now. I'll also share with you the worst piece of advice every single student follows. All right, so the first thing is, wait, this is just not me. I need some more input. Oh yeah, let me call my friend Harshita. Hey, hi, Sanskar. One thing which is already being talked about a lot is learning in public. You know, it helps you take accountability and take credibility of your work because the kind of student I am, I will slack off unless, you know, I don't know that four, like four people know that, you know, I'm learning something and I'm accountable for learning for something. So learning in public, sharing your work with people and taking due feedback is something that students in India can do to stand out. Still not good enough. Oh yeah, let me call my friend Satyam. Hey Satyam bro, please join the video call. What's your advice for students looking for internships? So I would say uh, make as many projects as you can. Uh, it should be different, it should be unique, not just any uh, tutorial that you saw on YouTube. If you are watching tutorials, try to add some features by yourself so that it stands you out. Uh, since there will be many projects over there like uh, on different applications where they just build a marketplace, but maybe add some more features in it and make it stand out. So that's one advice and accept that. Maybe try to post uh, about your projects on Twitter and LinkedIn. Uh, because nowadays I've been seeing that I've, I got, get like at least one opportunity right. every two weeks uh, from Twitter. Mm -hmm. So that's the okay. you know, best place to share your project. So if you're building anything, just share it over there. Even if you are, you know, complete newbie in that particular field, just share it. I have a domain that's quite niche, right? So a lot of competition gets eliminated over there when you're doing something that's a little bit different from what the rest of the people are doing. But doing something different also comes with its own set of challenges. You have a less number of people to reach out to, a less number of role models to look for guidance, right? So I think doing, you know, opting for a domain that is a little bit different, it takes courage in itself, but it also sets you apart and it gives you a head start. A lot of competition already gets eliminated. So going a bit deeper, Harshita, how did you get these opportunities? So I used to organize this hackathon called Electrothon. I was a part of the organizing team and I was looking for people who could be potential judges. So I was, you know, messaging people on LinkedIn and this happened to be uh, an indie game studio and, you know, they came across my profile and they said, would you like to give an interview? So that's how I landed my first internship, talking about Doyo. So they were looking for somebody who could build a 3D experience for them. They were a you know startup who hadn't launched their first product yet, and the founder happened to be one of the alumni of my college. So I reached out to him. I showcased my work. I sent over my portfolio, and gradually one thing led to another. Then I came to know about this opening at MPL, and again you know community matters. It's people from the community they share the opportunity with me. That's the thing about communities, you know, they look at you as a potential means of collaboration over competition. Somebody sent the opportunity over, I applied. I had two rounds of interviews, both of which were technical. And then I fetched my internship at MPL. So if I talk about Froker, so I just applied to some companies back in January. Like it was like around 20 companies and I got reached out by one of those companies that was Froker. So their CTO reached out to me. So at that time, it was an early startup. startup. So I had an interview of like, around 15 to 20 minutes it was just a walk around of how I got into tech and what kind of experience that I have. So at that time, he was kind of uh, impressed by my hackathon experience. So he, he just offered me like in the next, uh, on the next day itself. So what do you think helped you get this opportunity? I mean, what did you have on your resume before this? Uh, so before this, I had no experience and I had no college experience as well. I wasn't in college, I was in gap year. So the thing that ha helped me was basically hackathons. Like I had done uh, till that time around 16 to 70 hackathons and had more on like majority of them. And I had projects in different field. Like at that time I was uh, interning as a backend developer intern like for that Froga company. But before that, uh, I didn't have that much of an experience in backend, but still uh, they hired me because I had experience of working with different technologies and had you know many other projects on my profile. So that's something that helped me to get it. So right from my first year of college, I was very much intrigued by the technologies of virtual continuum, AR, VR, you know, mixed reality and all. 
So I started learning this tool called Unity 3D. I started building, you know, little VR games, little little game prototypes. And I used to take part in a lot of hackathons. I used to take part in a lot of hackathons. I, I also organized one, but you know, the kind of um, fun and the experience that you get by taking part in a hackathon, the pressure, the adrenaline surge that you experience just one day before a hackathon, when you have to submit a project, there are deadlines to be met, presentations to be made. So I guess hackathons played a huge role. Why do you think hackathons help student developers stand out and make a good portfolio for themselves? You learn more from hackathons than what you can do from normal YouTube videos. So during the hackathon, we have this, you know, we have this goal that we are supposed to build this MVP within 24 hours or 36 hours. So that just drives us even more than what we like. How, how we build projects during the weekdays so that's something and except that i believe uh while working for a hackathon we have a prize in mindset prize in our mind right like if we build this then we might be able to win this particular prize so and we have like different track prizes so we get an idea that okay this is something that we can build over it if i'm talking to you as a first year student at that point of time mm-hmm. what all technologies did you explore and what sort of if I can call it a roadmap that you followed. So the problem with roadmaps is that the thing that might work for one will not work for uh, the other person. So it's totally up to you, how you find your path, how you discover it. As far as my case was concerned, I used to like to design a lot, right? So I was very much interested in, you know, making all those posters for the clubs in my college and stuff like that. So that gave me a sense of creativity that gave me a sense of messing up with, you know, tools experimenting with them so in my first year i was pretty much doing a lot of design and then i got to know about unity i got to know about ar development kits i got to know about euphoria ar core so that's where i started learning about you know ar vr i learned a bit of programming i learned this programming language called c sharp that's pretty much about my first and second year then instead of you know just going deeper and just going wider and wider and picking one tool the other day and the other tool the next day i try to go a little deeper into it also one thing that i totally forgot about in your first year learn git and github very important will help you everywhere in life so if i have to like totally name technologies learn one or two programming languages in your first year learn git and github start making contributions to open source be it code-based contributions or non-code-based contributions And, you know, in your first year, you don't need to have that spirit of competition. I don't think there's no, there's any need for that right in the first year. Just do things for the joy of it. From the second year, you can get a little competitive. You can get a little serious about stuff. But first year is for doing things for the joy of it. If you enjoyed this video, do share your thoughts with me in the comments below. And also don't forget to share it with your friends. That way they get to learn as well. And I get more and more of views, which eventually helps me make better quality content. All right, keep hustling, keep watching.